Welcome to another episode of Cook with Brooke, the cooking show that doesn't feature any food. This show is all about what's cooking at the Air Force Enlisted Village. So today we have a great show for you. Uh, I'm going to give you the normal COVID update for our campus and the local community. And then we're also going to have on Mr. Ted Corcoran from the Greater Fort Walton Beach Chamber of Commerce. He's going to talk to us a little bit about things that are happening within the chamber, and I think you'll be very impressed to learn a little bit more about what they're doing. And then also we're going to talk a little bit about an issue that's coming up on the upcoming ballot. We know that we're not political here, but this is uh, a way to explain one of the issues that's going to come up on the ballot. And candidly, I'll be the first to admit, sometimes I look at a ballot and I see what's on that, and I don't have any idea what that issue is, and yet they're asking me to vote on it. So this is an opportunity for us to be better informed about an issue that's coming up. And that's going to be talking about a proposed school tax. So along those lines, I thought, you know what, let's have some school humor. So the question is, for my joke, why did the math book look so sad? Because it had so many problems. That's the funny one. The next one is the child comes home from his first day of school and mother asks, uh, did you learn anything today? And the child said, not enough. I have to go back tomorrow. So that's what we got for our jokes for this week. So let's talk a little bit about COVID. Um, uh, number one, it's been a couple weeks since we've had one of these episodes and uh, uh, Florida has reopened to a new phase. We are now in phase three of the reopening. Um, uh, as you look around our campus, you look around the Air Force Enlisted Village, I think you'll notice that not much has really changed. Uh, even though it seems to have relaxed downtown with more restaurants being open, some bars reopening, some spaces being allowed to have more people in, uh, we have not taken that step. Uh, and I, I sense, and uh, I've asked a number of residents um, what they would like to see, how they would like to proceed, and uh, what, we're deter what we have learned is that uh, there's really not a great urge to change what we're doing right now because, uh, because we're successful. Uh, right now, again, we are proud to report that we have no staff members, uh, no residents of either Bob Hope Village or the Hawthorne House that have positive COVID tests. So we're doing the right things and we're keeping our social distance. We're wearing masks when we're out in public. We're washing our hands. Uh, and so uh, I, I'm very cautious um, about moving away from the things that we have done that have been so successful. So uh, we'll keep you posted on that. If we do decide to make some changes, uh, we'll let everybody know. But for right now, I think the status quo is the safe place to be. Uh, this is... Um, this is a, a long-term problem. Uh, we've talked about that for a number of months, and we've been doing this for almost seven months now. Um, and, and we are going to have to continue to be vigilant to make sure that we're protecting ourselves and our community. And right now, I'm very comfortable that uh, we're doing the right things. Uh, when you go downtown and when we talk to our staff members who are incredible uh, about the things that they're doing when they're going to town, we, we talk about the three C's. We stay to be very careful about um, crowded places, closed-in spaces, uh, and then the other one is close contact. Those are the three C's. So we ask people to be aware of that when you walk into a room or you go into an area and you're looking at what that situation is. Uh, if it looks like it's not right and you look like maybe you're going to be uncomfortable in that area, uh, you're probably right. Um, you know, pay attention to what that little tingling feeling is that tells you when something's not right. So be careful. Uh, make sure that you continue to practice the good social distancing and the hand washing and really the basic things that uh, the CDC told us to do seven months ago. Those are still the things that we need to make sure that we're doing right now. So uh, we're going to cut away now and we're going to take it over to Knife's Edge and we're going to find out what they have cooking on their show. Uh, actually, they're actually menu uh, for the week ahead and I think you're going to love it. Uh, we just love having Carrie and her team here on campus and providing us fantastic food. So let's find out what they have upcoming for the week ahead.
Welcome back everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed that preview of the week ahead from Knife's Edge. As promised, we now have a near celebrity, Mr. Ted Corcoran from the Fort Walton Beach Chamber of Commerce. And um, number one, thank you for joining us today and thank you for sharing a little bit of insight. Um, tell us a little bit about the Chamber of Commerce for I'll those that, that aren't familiar with Let it. Let me do that, Brooke, and if I could, you are the celebrity now. You and Scarlett have taken over the airwaves <laughs> here in not only here on the village, but certainly all throughout all of Okaloosa County. <laughs> so we're very grateful. Yes, I am Ted Corcoran from the Greater Fort Walton Beach Chamber of Commerce. We're honored to have Brooke on our board. If you're not familiar with what a chamber is, a chamber of commerce is a member-based organization that facilities like Air Force Enlisted Village pay money to join to get some type of benefit out of. Traditionally, marketing which is one of the things mm -hmm. that they, that you folks have done for many years with the chamber. Yes, and we, as you have said, we, we are a long-term member. Uh, we love being on the chamber. And one of the reasons I think that uh, your chamber, our chamber is so successful is because we don't necessarily just focus on business. Can you, you share a little bit of the background on how that came to be? Because you, the organization uh, touches so many people and it's, it's much more than just a business organization. Yeah, no doubt about it, Brooke. And again, with your leadership on the board, that's one of the reasons we do that is this. So you have all these businesses and organizations join and they're promoting their business and things along those lines. But then someone like Scarlett or someone like Ryan Price or so will say, hey, who's handling this aspect of our community? Because that's an important part of our community activities, such as the homelessness. Mm -hmm. Ten years ago, we had folks come to us and said, hey, who is addressing the homeless issue here in Okaloosa County? At the time, there was a void. And as a result, the Fort Walton Beach Chamber of Commerce is running a men's uh, homeless shelter called One Hopeful Place. The only Chamber of Commerce in the entire United States who's doing that right now. Well, that's terrific. And I mean, that's a great example of filling a social need with an organization that is not necessarily profit driven uh, and, and has the resources and the leadership to be able to step into a space that nobody else is doing. So yeah, it, it is a gap, Brooke. There's no doubt about it. And it's because of memberships such as Air Force Enlisted Village, Chef Knife and others that allows the organization, again, our board and volunteers to say, let's take that subject on because nobody else is. So whether it's traffic on Highway 98, the Brooks Bridge, the homeless shelter, the list is endless on various initiatives that we do that not only promote the benefit and the quality of life of our businesses and organizations, but ultimately all the residents in our county. Well, that's fantastic. And thank you for your leadership in that. Uh, we're going to cut away now and we're going to go to some birthday celebrations. And so we'll be right back in just a second. We'll have another segment. All right, welcome back. Happy birthday to all those October babies, me included. Um, we are going to continue our conversation with Ted Corcoran from the Fort Walton Beach Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I guess I should say the greater Fort Walton Beach Chamber of Commerce, just to be precise. Thank you, sir. Um, and we're going to talk about the latest issue that has come up that the Fort Walton Beach um, Chamber has accepted as a challenge, um, and that is the School Sense Makes Sense proposal that is on the upcoming election balance, uh, ballot. Can you, uh, can you share a little bit Absolutely, with us, Brooke, please? Another example of where the community has said, hey, who's handling this issue? Mm -hmm. And the issue in this case is the condition of our schools. Amazing facts as you learn about, amazing, how about this book, can you imagine this? 75% of our schools in Okaloosa County, 75% are over half a century old. Mm. We as a community have only built two new schools this century. Wow. Imagine when our timeline for schools is based on centuries, right. we are behind the times. Right. And there are parents all over and grandparents out there and great grandparents who know that the condition of our schools are in horrendous shape and it's up to our community to do whatever we can to get them better for the education of our kids. 
Well, I will tell you, I, I, w during my service, when I was stationed at another location, not in Fort Walton Beach or not in Florida, uh, one of the areas there uh, had trouble with school. And you could tell by the zip codes and by the property values where the good schools were. And I think most people don't necessarily equate the fact that the investment into schools is what draws families and supports infrastructure on such a large scale. So uh, tell us a little bit about, I know, uh, I know Marcus Chambers is uh, championing this. Yes. Can you tell us just a little bit more about what they would do with the money that will come in? Yeah, well, again, just to reiterate what you're saying, of course, the one thing everyone in the county can agree on is the importance of education and the importance of, of, of schools for our children. So here's what happens. Happens. The school, there's just not enough money to rebuild our schools. They're old and so on and so forth. So the way to do that is to create a local optional sales tax, which means we as a voting public are willing to invest half a cent to uh, per dollar in rebuilding our schools for capital projects. Mm -hmm. The school district has gone through all 40 schools and picked out the list of projects. Uh, uh, HVAC, air conditioning, roofs, all that kind of stuff that's necessary mm -hmm. for the education of our children. We have not done it in Okaloosa County for over 25 years, which means two or three generations of children are still experiencing the same thing that they had at that school when Jimmy Carter was president. So the uh -huh. goal here is for the referendum to vote yes, the money that comes in will be used for capital goods only, repairing all the projects or as many as we can in the school. Every single school will have projects taken care of. Wow. And that, now this tax is going to go on forever? or It's a 10-year plan. Thank you for that. It's a 10-year plan only. And it's very important to realize, you know, a lot of our people don't have kids in school anymore. They may not have children that went to school here, but education is the lifeline of any community. And here in Okaloosa County, right. it's imperative that we vote yes. It's for 10 years. It will get our schools up to where they need to be mm -hmm. because there are businesses and there are families, as you just mentioned, who will not come to Okaloosa County right now because the schools are not the way they need to be right. for the education of their children. Yeah, and I was just uh, trading emails with the uh, uh, individual over in Piquito Bayou, and their association is having a meeting recent uh, in the future, and I was asking them uh, to let us address this issue with the school, because we are part of Piquito Bayou Association, uh, along with Longwood Elementary. And I think one of the greatest things about Piquito Bayou is the fact that there is an elementary school that is right here, and yet... Um, I'm not sure that people appreciate what a valuable resource that is and to have a school that is uh, so vibrant and so involved and such a core piece of your community is crucial. It's, ab it's absolutely unbelievable. For the last couple of years, the school teachers, this, our schools in Okaloosa County are in the top five of the 67 counties in the state of Florida, top five. The teachers, the administrators do a spectacular job. The buildings, however, of which the, ch the city, the community can help. Mm -hmm. through the sales option. It's our job to help them w live and l uh, educate in an environment that is suitable for our children. Right. And there's uh, there's certainly an element here with a, a tax on um, sales that would uh, bring tourist dollars into play, right? So the, the dollars that from the, our friends that come down and spend vacations with us, they can actually help us to improve our schools, right? Absolutely. What's called the local optional sales tax means it's on the sales tax. It's not on the property tax. It's not on a business tax. It's on a sales tax. And as we all know, tourism is the lifeblood of our community. Mm -hmm. Over 56% of the sales tax collected in Okaloosa County seasonally, over 56% is paid for by our tourists, right. which means those folks who are down here enjoying our facilities and our beaches, et cetera, will help pay for these repairs. That's why a, a sales tax is a great way to doing it. It's fair to everyone who comes into Okaloosa County. Right. And uh, now we talked about people coming in and uh, the military comes in and they're obviously a huge portion of our community. Um, I know that there has been concerns that have been raised within certain circles within the military about education. I know that's actually one of the criteria that they now look at when they make basing decisions. Can you talk a little bit yeah, more absolutely. about that? Absolutely. General Kane comes into town here, a great guy. I hopefully you've had him over here. Wonderful yes, man. Sir. And absolutely what they're looking for for their families who are committing to the military is lodging certainly how is the housing but more importantly how are the schools mm -hmm. and when they visit some of these schools that are over 50 60 70 years old they do not have the technology they do not have uh, the roofs they do not have the air conditioning etc it is unsuitable as a matter of fact Brooke it was really interesting at today as I was coming here today on the side of the road just outside the, the gate entranceway was a broken down bus 
The buses in Okaloosa County are over 27 years old. Mm. Many of the buses do not have air conditioning. We got our buses from Escambia County. We got the leftovers from Escambia County. Mm. So imagine now if you are coming into the military and you're putting your child on a bus to take them to school, it has no air conditioning, it breaks down on the side of the road, which one did today. Mm -hmm. It's out there right now when I'm filming this. It is unacceptable for not only military, but for all the residents uh, here in Okaloosa County. Well, uh, thank you for uh, your passion. Thank you for your leadership to the Greater Fort Walton Beach Chamber of Commerce, but more importantly to the entire community because uh, as we are standing today in Shalimar, your reach is well outside of the boundaries of Fort Walton Beach. It really goes across the entire county and I would say in, into our neighboring counties as well. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you for sharing the information about the School Sense Make Sense project. And we look forward to having you back on again in the future. Uh, but again, thank you for joining us and God bless you and God bless all the great work you're doing. Thank you, Brooke. Vote yes, everyone. Vote yes for our schools. It's on the back of the ballot, lower right hand corner, Okaloosa County School Referendum. Vote yes, help us change our community. Yes. All right, welcome back. So you had two segments there. One, you had the virtual 9K run, and if you haven't had a chance to get out and do that, you're still opportunities to be able to sign up for that. Uh, it's a great way for you to be part of our community uh, and contribute in there, and you can go run or walk at your own time, at your own pace. Uh, my wife and I uh, did it last weekend. It was so much fun and uh, just an opportunity to remember Chief Master Sergeant in the Air Force number nine, James Benneker, and to also to help to battle Alzheimer's and dementia and memory care, memory support issues. So it's a great cause. Uh, it's a great memorial run. So please get out there and join us if you can. Um, we also had an opportunity to hear about the resident referral program. We know that uh, great friends make great neighbors. This is your opportunity to be able to pick which neighbors come in. So refer the good ones in, have them get in touch with us, and we look forward to having them come join us in our fantastic community. Ted Corcoran was here, gave us a great rundown on an amazing organization, the Greater Fort Walton Beach Chamber of Commerce and the th amazing things they have been doing, uh, and then they, the challenge that they have accepted with the, uh, the school tax referendum. So hopefully you're more educated in that area. Um, we're not going to tell you how to vote, but hopefully you have a better understanding of what that issue is. Because again, I know there's a lot of times when you get a ballot and it's the first time you've seen it and you're not really sure what it is. So we wanted to afford you the opportunity to be able to hear what that would actually go for. So. Thank you again for watching this episode of Cook with Brooke. Uh, I pray for you all. I hope that you're safe. Uh, maintain the good practices that we have that have prevented COVID from coming into our community. Uh, take care of one another. Let us know if there's anything we can do for you. God bless you all, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.